a lot of rappers still it seems like want to be Tupac. They want to have his popularity. They want people to love them like they everyone loves him. But why do you think no one's succeeding? <laughs> well, because I, this is what they fail to realize about Tupac. In order for them to be Tupac, they would have to die before they peaked. Right before they peaked, they would have to die. So if you don't like, you don't die. You, you can't do it. Bottom line, if you don't go die. You're not gonna be the next two five, cause it ain't gonna be the next two five. Straight up. He's returned to the intensive care unit tonight after another surgery. Still listed in critical condition. I hear the doctor standing over me, screaming, I can make it. Got a body full of bullet holes laying here, nigga. Outside the hospital. He's undergone two operations since coming here. He's had his right lung removed. He can't breathe. Something's evil in my IV. Cause every time I breathe, I think they're killing me. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab. I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. You know what, y'all? I was thinking, right? You know, a hospital in a major city may be able to employ a boat. 15, 20, now that might be too much. At least 10,000 employees. You got janitors, you got doctors, you got surgeons, you got students, you got orderlies, you got nurses. You have um, security. You have just maintenance people, all types of people work inside hospitals, right? Every human being on two feet in America has been inside a hospital. And you mean to tell me for five nights and six days, the most revered rapper of all time spent his dying days in the hospital and nobody from the hospital has come forward with a major story. I find that very odd, man. In a day and age, where people want 15 minutes of fame for anything. Nobody has a Tupac story coming out of the hospital. Out the UMC, not a single soul. Now I understand the HIPAA stipulations where you can't disclose a patient's medical history. That's one thing. But I'm talking about a memory, an experience with Tupac's family, the night Tupac was brought in the ER, just anything. You know what? What was going on? How is the hospital and why is the hospital so top secret? And, you know, I just find that very odd that, you know, nothing really, not a peep has really came out out the hospital. It's been well over 20 years, man. I just find that odd. Um... The whole situation is strange with the hospital regarding Tupac's stay because it was a rocky stay from all accounts. You know, you hear about death threats. You hear about bickering. You hear about um, people trying to pose as family and friends, the paparazzi, to get a glimpse of Tupac. You hear about, um, you know, just different, all types of different circumstances all came into play around Tupac's death at this point in time. Um, you have confusion. You know, the doctors were well aware of Tupac's wounds. He had two gunshot wounds to the chest, one to his hand causing him to lose a finger, and one to the lower extremity, a hip shot, which later in fact turned out to be the kill shot, right? So they knew about these wounds, and at first, Tupac's wounds were considered to be, you know, not life-threatening. That was the initial report. Then, you know, a couple days into his stay at the hospital, you even had a doctor come out publicly and said they already told the family they once again expect the rap star to make a full recovery. You know, and then next thing you know, Maybe less than 48 hours later, Tupac is pronounced dead on his fifth night, sixth day at the hospital. Let's do the math. Got shot September the 7th. You got the 8th. You got the 9th. You got the 10th. You got the 11th. 
the 12th, and then the 13th, the sixth day is when he died. It's just strange, man. It's strange. Um, because, like I said, they knew, you know, what Tupac's injuries were, and they considered them non-threatening. And then they just turned for the worse, and that's very possible. But, you know, a professional medical staff, nobody caught on to the hip shot that allegedly the bullet traveled through his hip and up to his uh, abdominal. You know what I mean? That's, that's wild. It's just wild, man. You, you know, like once again, so many different stories, so many moving parts, but nobody from that side is willing to talk about anything. I mean, you heard a lot of third party accounts. Somebody's mother was a, a, a nurse or somebody's father was a surgeon and they said this or they said that, or some of the documentaries actually film outside the hospital. You know, but I don't remember a concrete interview, you know, with somebody that was part of the medical staff or somebody that, you know, would go on record and tell you exactly what they saw. You know, I never saw any footage of Tupac being brought into the hospital or anything like that. Just, just nothing. You know, I know he was there, you know, by all accounts. I've talked to people that was right there with him or, you know, at the hospital, I'm just wondering why was everything so close under wraps? And you have to look at the, the elephant in the room. You know what I mean? We owe it to Pac to not try to sugarcoat this or look past it because Tupac was very uncomfortable and had a serious distrust for hospitals, especially if he was ever in a vulnerable state. That's a fact. First time Tupac was shot in New York City at Quad Studio, he got up out the hospital. He was not trying to lay around and let them doctors do whatever they wanted to do to him. When he was of himself, he checked himself out of there. This go round, you know, Tupac was put into a medically induced coma. He had no say so over anything the hospital did to him. And before they put him in that coma, he was trying to get up out of there this time too. It's weird to me, man, because you can subdue or sedate a person without putting them in a coma. You can even put somebody to sleep. It's a difference between being put to sleep and being put in a coma. If you put somebody to sleep after the medicine wears off, they'll wake up. If they put you in a medically induced coma, nine times out of 10, they have to revive you. And I'm no doctor, but that's a fact. So they put Pac in this coma. And like I said, you hear a thousand different stories. One minute they say he woke up today. The then you hear Tupac going into surgery, his second surgery. They gotta remove a lung. Then you hear you know, Tupac had to be put on life support. Tupac had to be revived. Tupac had a heart attack. The, Tupac had to get his finger removed. There was just so many different things that took place at the hospital. Um, and nobody talks about none of it. Like I said, you have people that was there that are talk, but nothing coming from the side of the medical team. Now the janitor, the janitor didn't say anything. He wasn't mopping the floor that night. The people in the cafeteria, the people that bring you food, nobody bought pot jello. I'm just trying to figure out like nobody got a story coming out the, the university medical center. That's wild to me, man. <laughs> That's wild to me. Tell me what y'all think, man. Truly. How do you feel about the five nights and six days that Tupac stayed in the hospital? Kind of suspicious, y'all. Anyway, I'm your homie, Gab. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.